The three tenors, Luciano Pavarotti, Placido Domingo, and uh, Jose Carrera, started a small cottage industry when they gave what was supposed to be a one-off concert uh, just outside of Rome uh, on the eve of the World Cup uh, uh, soccer finals in 1990. Uh, of course, it, the thing took off like a shot, and soon they were doing this in arenas and stadia all over the world. In 1996, they promised to sing us through two years uh, in Vancouver by by singing Pass Through uh, Midnight. In, in fact, that was the ad campaign, come and spend two years with the tenors. And uh, uh, there would be an orchestra of 120 players uh, comprised of uh, the Vancouver Symphony and the Toronto Symphony. And uh, the tickets were pretty steep. And for $4,000, you could then enjoy dinner after the concert with the boys, the three boys, at the uh, very swanky uh, waterfront hotel. The radio station that paid me exorbitantly to do what I do naturally, talk, 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 uh, suddenly called me up and said that I was the master of ceremonies and they'd rented me a tux and everything. So I went down to BC Place, which was the big domed football stadium, uh, seating 50,000 people, and I thought, hey, great gig. Uh, and I met a hair lunatic who ran this whole operation. He eventually ended up in prison for many years for fraud and, I don't know, bribery and who knows what else. And... Um, uh, so he explained, you know, what, what's going to happen, and I just have to entertain the folks for 15 minutes between 11.45 and basically say, eventually say, would you like to hear more of the tenors? And the audience would scream, and then they'd, they'd come back, and I'd be a hero, and they'd be heroes, and so on. Well, that's pretty simple. So I arrived at the big night, and somebody said that uh, Harry Lunatic wants to see me in his office. By the way, the tenors each had $50,000 dressing rooms for one night, each of which was torn down immediately afterwards, and they were paid a million dollars each for one night. That, that was guaranteed, no matter what else happened, they, they got paid. So I went and saw her lunatic, and I said, what's up? And he said, well, the, you know, the tenors, they, they won't be coming back after the midnight. And I said, that's funny, because normally English is my uh, first language, and I don't understand what you just said. And now, as they want to spend the New Year's with their families, I said, you're going to have a riot on your hands. People have paid, expecting them to sing from 9.30 to 11.45 and then sing Auld Lang Syne and a few more big hits, a couple of Nessum Dormas, and there you go. No, that's the way it is. So I said, well, what do you expect me to do? And he said, well, you have two hours to think about that, don't you? <laughs> well, they... they I sang very well, and the local entrepreneur who arranged all this, she lost her Hermes uh, shirt, lost her Hermes shirt, bag, and, and shoes. And uh, this event was the talk of an outraged and, and slighted town for weeks. And it took me, personally, about five years before I could listen to Pavarotti again. Pickle, what's the difference between the story I just told you and the great uh, musical, the music man, you know, 76 trombones. Well, the difference is that um, the music man has great songs and a happy ending.